Hello, clever people. I hope you're having an amazing day. My name is Victor, and I wish you a warm welcome to this topic. Today, I'm going to use these trusty scales to weigh two browser automation libraries, Selenium WebDriver and Microsoft Playwright. We'll look at browser support, language bindings, basic web interactions, test execution speed, community support, implicit and explicit weighting, and a couple of other things like user simulation fidelity, test runner support, CICD integration, parallel execution, record and playback tools, and test authoring. There's a lot to talk about, so let's get it on. Well, I hope most of you guys already know about Selenium, so allow me to give you a playwright in a nutshell, in 30 seconds. It's a Node.js library made for browser automation. It's free, open source, and it's backed up by Microsoft. The team behind it are mostly browser engineers. Some of them used to work for Google at a tool called Puppeteer. That's the basic gist of it. If you feel a craving for more Playwright goodies, head over to this link, where you'll get a better idea of how Playwright works, how to install it, how to generate scripts, and so on. You can come back to this one afterwards. Cool. Let's start weighing our options. The first thing to look at is the official browser support. We'll look at Playwright first. It supports three browser engines, Chromium, Firefox, and WebKit. Now, what are these browser engines? They are what drives the whole rendering of the web page. The Chromium browser engine sits behind three browsers, Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, and Opera. Firefox is behind Firefox, and WebKit is the engine behind Apple Safari. On the other hand, we have Selenium, which supports Chrome, Firefox, Edge, IE, Opera, and Safari. Now spot the difference. Yeah, you call it, it's our old friend IE. It's not long before Microsoft abandons Internet Explorer, but until then, Selenium gets this badge. Next on our list is the official supported languages, or how they call it, language bindings. Playwright supports Java, Python, C Sharp, JavaScript, and TypeScript, while Selenium supports Java, Python, C Sharp, JavaScript, and Ruby. While they have these languages in common, each has one additional supported language, right? Although to be fair, it's hard to call TypeScript a full-fledged language, as it's a superset of JavaScript. So let's take our trusty skills here and give this shiny Ruby badge to Selenium as well. The third item on our comparison is basic web interactions. These are your normal interactions that you would expect a normal user to do on a web page, like open a page, locate an element, click, type, read data, etc. To locate an element in Playwright, you use page, dot, dollar, and locator, while in Selenium, you use drive, find element, strategy, and locator. Would say pretty similar, right? Next, let's take a look at actions. To click an element, Playwright does element.click, while Selenium does, well, exactly the same. To put some text in a field or text box, Playwright does type text, while Selenium does send keys text. It's a similar story with clearing a text, selecting options, etc. As you would expect, things are fairly similar with reading data from the page as well. Playwright does inner text, is enabled and is visible, while Selenium does get text, is enabled and is displayed. So there's not much to talk about here. The important thing to remember though, is it's normal to see common interactions between automation tools. Basic web interactions are modeled around what the user can do. Both Selenium and Playwright do a good job at this, so they both receive this badge. If we are at it, let's take a look at some other things that they do comparably well. They both do a good job at simulating a user as accurately as possible, they both support a number of test runners. They are very easy to integrate with continuous integration and continuous delivery systems. Both do a great job at parallel test execution, which is more of a test runner job than their job. They both support record and playback tools, which can be used to generate automation code. Now here, Selenium has a Selenium IDE and Playwright has the Playwright code gem utility. And last but not least, None of them have any authoring issues, so they both get points for it. Let's put these on the scale as well. Of course, both do a good job at these, so there are no changes. The next item on our list is execution speed. It's quite hard to measure the speed of automation tools, but nonetheless, the guys at Cheekly did a relevant case study. 
They compared the performance of a number of browser automation libraries, including Playwright and WebDriver IO. Now, before we see the results, I have to mention that doing such a measurement is not an easy feat. For a fair comparison, you need to run the test in a controlled environment. In this case, this meant every test was run sequentially on the same machine. Scripts are not identical, but are very similar. They used the latest versions of the tools, the same browser, headless Chrome, and they did thousands of repetitions. Let's take a look at the results. Playwright was the fastest of the five measured tools. Compared to it, WebDriver was almost 20% slower. If you want to understand these indicators or what tools lie behind the other doors, please find the link to the full article in the description below. So let's take a look at our trusty scale. When it comes to speed, Playwright swipes its first victory. Now, before we go to our next measurement, I want to take a look at two items that directly influence speed. Starting the browser and waiting. How does starting the browser influence the execution time of an automation script? Well, the simple answer is it doesn't influence it that much. But if there's even a slight delay, and there is, and if you run a suite of automated scripts, it's going to compound, making the number of restarts significant. Traditionally, in Selenium, you restart the browser for each test. Knowing this is an issue, the guys at Playwright came up with an interesting concept that allows you to start the browser only once at the beginning of the suite. Playwright uses something called context. Well, what is a context then? Give me one minute and I'll tell you about it. It's easy to understand if you've ever used incognito mode in Chrome before. Incognito mode is completely independent from your normal mode. For example, if you log into an account from tab 1 in your normal Chrome, you will be able to access that account from any of the tabs in normal Chrome. However, if you open up an incognito window, you won't be able to access it from any of the other tabs. That's because incognito cannot see, hear, or talk to the normal Chrome, and vice versa. It's the same with Playwright Context. They are just as an incognito window. No matter how many you have, they are completely independent from each other. Now, how about code-wise? Well, in Selenium, you would create a new driver instance and then tell it to open a page. Looking at our previous example, you have a browser and a tab. In Playwright, you have one more action between the two. So you open up the browser, then the context, and then a new page. You have the browser and the tab, but the tab is part of this new context. Okay. The minute is up, so let's continue with our next item, waiting. Even though it's somehow related to speed, this one is such an important feature that will wait on our scales independently. I'll start by stating this. Fixed waits are a no-no, so most of the times they should be avoided altogether. So what are fixed waits? Well, they are any waits which are completely independent from the application you are interacting with. The most common in Java is thread.sleep. Don't use it. Now that we've got fixed weights out of the way, let's look at other options to wait in Selenium. We have implicit weights, explicit weights, and fluent weights. Implicit weights are the ones which you set once and are applied throughout the whole project. Sounds cool, right? Well, it would be if they weren't officially discouraged. Simon Stewart himself said this about implicit weights. The advice of the Selenium team has always been to try and minimize the timeout used, preferably to zero. This was back in 2016, but I see there's some mystery left in Selenium 4 as well. The official documentation states, Warning! Do not mix implicit and explicit weights. Doing so can cause unpredictable wait times. And that's too bad, as explicit weights and fluent weights are okay-ish. I say ish for one reason only, code readability. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's say we need to click on an element in Selenium. You would need to locate the element, then click on it. Simple enough, right? Well, in most cases, this will be enough, but with modern applications, some of the elements are added after the page has loaded, which means locating an element could work intermittently, causing the nightmare also known as flakiness. Let's avoid this nightmare using an explicit weight. You need to instantiate the weight, 
configure its condition, and only afterwards you can find the element and click on it. It's harder to read, right? It's the same case with fluent weights. They just make the code less readable. In Playwright, on the other hand, it's like having a working version of the implicit weight. There is a global timeout, and for each type of action, there are a set of preconditions which are checked before interacting with the element. For example, on click, it will check if it's attached, visible, stable, able to receive events, and enabled. So taking out our scales here, we'll have to give this one to Playwright as well. Cool. The next one we're looking at is community and commercial support. We'll start with Playwright. It has fast release cycles, and because it's still new, some of them come with breaking changes. The community behind it is mainly developers. The three main sources of documentation are if its official page, a very responsive Slack channel, and GitHub. As it's still new, there are only a couple of companies offering commercial support for it. On the other hand, Selenium comes with slower release cycles, which means most of its releases are stable. The community behind it is mainly testers. It's a well-established tool, so there's lots of community support. And there's lots of learning material like courses and tutorials. And there are lots of companies offering commercial support. So without further ado, let's see where this badge of honor goes to. Selenium, of course. But wait, there's more. There are a number of features which are native to Playwright but require additional work or libraries to work in Selenium. I will just list them and talk only a short bit about each. Shadow Dome Piercing. I know it sounds like a Mortal Kombat move, but it's actually a tricky piece of a web page. Recording videos of your script execution. You know, when you run them on a remote server, but you still need to visually check what happened, reusing the authentication state. That's right, you can log in once using forms, clicks, and types, then save a file with the state of the browser after the login. Afterwards, you can load that state and you'll be logged in without actually using any clicks or types. You know, magic. You can implement your own custom selectors in Playwright and you can debug your test with the integrated Playwright debugger. Let's weigh these and see what happens with our scales. Playwright weighs exactly as much as Selenium does. Well, <laughs> of course not. But this was just a comparison. It wasn't me choosing a tool for you. It's so dependent on your own setup, team, experience, type of application, programming languages, cost of migration, and so on, that it would be completely futile for me to tell you that I like Playwright more or that Selenium is superior. It all depends on you. That's it. Let me know in the comments below which tool would you rather use. Is it Selenium or Playwright or maybe another tool? I maintain a small newsletter about Playwright, so make sure to head over to testopic.com slash Playwright if you want to be updated when I post a new video, cheat sheet, or other interesting stuff about this amazing tool. If you like this video, don't forget to use the like button below and who knows, maybe even subscribe. It definitely helps a lot. Cheers and have a good one.